Good afternoon and welcome to AV Training. I'm Sherry Barra, I'm the director at the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute and the staff member who greeted you out front is Carrie. Um, she's fairly new to our staff. She started in March of this past year. She is the person who typically does the recruiting of the class assistants and hosts. So uh, she spends a lot of time, particularly as we approach a semester, uh, tracking down all those people who said, yes, I'll do it, yes, I'll do it, or for those classes where no one did it, she tries to reach out and, and corrals someone. <laughs> um, we're going to run through a PowerPoint presentation today that mostly matches the handout that you have. From our session this morning, we've uh, popped in a couple of other slides for this afternoon so that you can just take some notes, but we wanted to make sure we got those in there so we wouldn't forget for the next time around. Feel free to ask questions as we go, okay? Can you hear me all right? How many instructors do I have here today? Oh, okay, great, four of you, all right. Um, I, the rooms that we get scheduled in here on campus at William & Mary, uh, we don't necessarily know at the time that the printer, the catalog goes out to the printer, specifically what room we might be in from semester to semester, particularly for the spring semester. Um, but all of the rooms are very similar with regard to the equipment, but there are some minor changes, and we're going to talk through some of those uh, as we go through today. Um, when we don't know which rooms we're going to be in, it's difficult to keep up with having a specific training guide for every single room. Um, but as I said, they're very similar. This particular room, I found out when we got here today, doesn't have a microphone here. And with 70 people, you might find you need that. This room also seems to have a little more HVAC background noise. Um, if, we, if you do think you're going to want that, we can look to see how many members are enrolled in your class. And if it is a large class, uh, we can have um, a staff member go to William and Mary's classroom support location and sign out a microphone so that you can have that for your class. So just keep that in mind. So do want to cover the difference between the responsibilities. Um, many years ago, our, we used to have AV assistants who were, had a little more technical ex expertise. But as the technology has advanced, uh, we began having trouble finding people willing to volunteer for that job because they only did it three days out of maybe a year and they would get very nervous and if something went wrong during class, they were extremely nervous. Uh, so we made some changes and what we changed at that time was that a staff member will set up the class but during class, it is the instructor's responsibility to know how to operate the equipment. If you are just continuing along with a PowerPoint presentation, you should have no trouble because we're going to set that up for you and make sure it's working before we leave. But if you are wanting to, to switch to a DVD and go to specific scenes in that DVD, you as the instructor need to know how to do that. Okay? As I said, uh, a staff member will set up the class, but on these rooms on campus, it is not an OSHER staff member. It will be a William & Mary Auxiliary Services person, uh, someone from their conference services department who does set up rooms for audiovisual will be coming over to meet an instructor every class about 30 minutes before the class begins. They will be here, and they'll make sure everything's up and running for you before, you, before they leave. Okay, uh, these room locations will have a host and that host will make any announcements that we've asked them to make. They can help you as the instructor pass out your handouts. If you want them to sort of keep track of the time for you to let you know that you're about halfway through the class, that's when we typically take a 10 minute break, uh, they'd be happy to do that, all right? There are no beverage service or cookies in these locations on campus. People can bring in um, beverages if they have a, a lid on them, but nothing offered here. So, The class assistant's job is just to adjust lights for you, adjust volume if needed, and they're going to make sure that the instructor closes out their file, takes it with them, and logs off the computer. Unlike some of our other locations, the Whiteman Cup Room or Discovery Classroom, 
We do not ask you to power down the computer. Just simply log off. But you will have to shut down the system, and we're going to show you how to do that today. If there should be a technical issue during class time, there is always a telephone near the podium. Sometimes they are mounted permanently on the podium itself, or they're going to be on a wall very close by. Whoop. And their phone number is also posted right here, classroom support. And it's just a five-digit number when you're calling anywhere using a campus phone on campus. So this 13011 is all you have to dial on that phone. I suggest using that phone as well because that identifies what room you're in to classroom support when they answer the phone. Okay? They cover support for Andrews Hall, Small Hall, Morton Hall, and Ewell Hall. And if there's any other information that you need to pass on or let the OSHER office know about, again, from a campus phone, you can dial the 11506 on the bottom of the screen. Or if you're using your cell number, you'll need to dial the full digit 2211506. Okay? Most of the systems in this building and those on campus are controlled by a small screen, which is either built into the podium or standing alone like this one is on the podium. They all operate fairly similarly. And in most of those rooms, when you power up the system using that screen, the projector is going to automatically turn on. And in a lot of those classrooms, the screen is also going to automatically come down. This one has a rope on the bottom of it, which is a pretty good indication that it is manually operated. You can just leave it down. Uh, I suspect they probably just leave it down all the time because we didn't have to do that. And in some of the older rooms, they actually have good old chalk. How about that? Taking us back. Um, some of the other rooms on campus do have dry erase marker boards. So it just depends on what room you're in. Some rooms that are larger, like the small hall, lecture hall, that's tiered and holds over 100, it has two screens. So you'll see variations like that depending on what room you're in. But they all operate basically the same way. If you should be considering bringing your own laptop rather than using the built-in computer that's here, you need to ensure that you have the correct connections for an HDMI or a VGA connection to the projector. For some of the newer Macs, I know they use a mini HDMI. We do not have that connection here, so you would need to have that converter if you were planning to use your own equipment. If you bring your thumb drive, you know, it's easiest to use what's here. It's already connected. It already knows how to talk to the projector and all the systems. But if you're more comfortable with your laptop, you can do that. Both those cables are lying up here, so you would just connect your laptop. We do ask that the handout that you have, you do keep in a private location because we are giving you this username and password, which allows you to have access to this William & Mary computer. So please don't let those lie around. So I want to show you some of those differences that we're talking about for controlling the system. When you turn the system on, you need to tell the projector what piece of equipment you want it to be looking at. And the two choices are you're going to look at the DVD player, or you're going to look at the computer that's here, or, I'm sorry, a third choice is looking at your laptop, if you happen to be bringing that. And so depending on what room you're in, it can be labeled slightly differently. In this scenario, it just has a picture of a CPU and it says PC. This one down here says in-room PC. This one says computer. But I think you can all figure out from looking at those three that that would be the one you want to use. If you're using the laptop, this one says laptop. This says podium laptop. This one just gives you an indication of whether you want to connect your laptop either with an HDMI cable or a VGA cable. 
If you're using the DVD player, this one says Blu-ray, this one says DVD VCR player, and this one says Blu-ray. So again, they're all very similar, but the wording can be just a little bit differently depending on when the last time that room was upgraded with its equipment. Blu-ray does cover DVD VCR. It just happens to also be Blu-ray compatible. This screen is more for us to get started, for you to say, OK, where do I want you to look so that you can find my presentation? Again, this room does not have a microphone at the time, so, uh, but if they do have one, I would assume they're going to be similar. Uh, there's just an on-off switch at the top. For class assistance, we want to make sure that the instructor turns that off during the break. Um, if you are a new instructor to OSHER, you're going to find that when you have that 10-minute break, the members get that break, but you typically don't because they're going to come forward and ask you some questions, but we don't need that to be miked. Um, and also, if the instructor wants to use the facilities during that break, we don't want that to be miked either. So please make sure they turn that off during break and then turn it back on. Then as a class assistant, please make sure you turn that off at the end of class so it does, doesn't run down the battery. In rooms in which they do have a microphone stationary there, they normally on the little pull-out keyboard tray have a couple of extra batteries so that if we need a new battery, it would be there. There are no host microphones in these rooms. In some of our other rooms, we have two different types of microphone, one for the head mic for the instructor and a handheld for the host. These rooms do not have those. Attendees. The question is, does, do these rooms have headsets for the attendees? They do not. Most of the William and Mary classrooms do not have those, although uh, some of those changes are going to be coming uh, under new ADA guidelines that they're going to be required to be able to have some things available for people. Yes, sir. Uh, I assume that we'll be able to use our flash drives in the computer if we have the the question is, and this is a time to, for me to remind you as an instructor to repeat the question that you get from any member in the classroom because if they're up front and ask you something, the people in the back may not have heard the question. His question was he can assume he would just bring a thumb drive, and yes, sir, that is correct. That's what I did for my PowerPoint. I just plugged it into the existing computer here. So if, there, if you do have a room in which there are microphones, again, the... Labeling can be slightly different. In this particular room, not meaning this room, but in a room, it has microphone controls. Uh, and over here, you can't really see it, but over here it says mics. And so you would touch that button and then that'll bring up a screen that has up and down arrows for the volume, like this. So. In, a, in some of the rooms, they might have three microphones. So the wireless microphone is here. This one is unmuted, and you can up or down the volume. And the blue lever will show you where you are on that volume scale. These two are muted out. Uh, and same thing over on the far left. They just look a little bit different, but they operate basically the same way. And the overall system volume is just on the outside of this little monitor. There's just an up and down arrow, and you can see as you rise with the volume level. You can play a DVD through the laptop. If you do that, you need to be comfortable as the instructor to know how to minimize your PowerPoint and then play the DVD player from the laptop and then open up your PowerPoint again when you're ready to go back to it. The other option is that you can use the DVD player that is here. It is down below the CPU. And if you use that, then you can keep your PowerPoint on the computer. And on the screen, you just touch the different button to say, OK, now I want you to look at the Blu-ray player. And then you can play that. And then when you touch the PC again, it will come back to your PowerPoint. So if you're switching between the two, I think that that's the easiest way. The one thing that people miss when they use the DVD player that way, though, is they don't have, if you're looking for a specific digit number that you're trying to get to within that DVD, 
you don't have that show up when you use the DVD player. But if you play it through the computer, you can see that. Um, but otherwise, using the DVD player seems to me the easiest way to switch between the two uh, quickly. There is no remote for the DVD player, however. So when you push the Blu-ray button up here to say I'm going to use the Blu-ray player, this is what you get to control it. If you want the menu, you can hit here and it will bring up the menu for your DVD. Here is the stop and play and fast forward and reverse. Is This is the CPU that's mounted down here. And yeah, you would just go ahead and put your thumb drive in. Um, also, these PowerPoint remotes, this does not come with this classroom, but the Osher office has several extra on hand. If you would like to use one to use to advance your slides, you're welcome to call the office ahead of time and sign one out for the duration of your class. It just allows you to move around the room a little more freely and advance your slides. If you wanted to use the computer tray for your DVD, then you would just open the tray here and then would operate your DVD through the computer. And or if you're using your laptop and it has a DVD tray, you could use that as well. If you care to borrow one of these PowerPoint remotes. It does have a laser pointer, which is this top button. And then below it are a left and a right arrow key, which advances your slide or reverses your slides. The third button is to launch your slideshow, but since you have a staff member who's going to be here and already get your PowerPoint up and started for you, you should not really have need to use that third button. To use this PowerPoint remote, it has a thumb drive, which is the brains, basically, of that unit, and it stores right inside the unit itself. We plug that in down at the computer, again, same place where you put your thumb drive. Um, it has an on-off switch on the side, and then you'll be ready to go. There is a document camera in all of the rooms, and some of them actually have two. Has anyone used a document camera before or knows anything about those? It's really the um, new version of a transparency projector. We all remember those, right? So I'm going to push the button on this screen that says, let me see if I turn this on. You have to tilt this down so it's looking at your page. But the great thing about this is you don't have to have copies made on that special transparency paper if you remember those days. You can lay anything on here. You can open a book to a map. You can lay a, a cell phone. Here I've had someone look something up on their cell phone and then um, display it that way. It has a zoom capability which you're not going to be able to see because I can't get it to show for you, but it will zoom closer in to whatever you've displayed. So it's a handy little tool if that is something that you think you have the um, need to use. So I'm just going to take this back down. I'm going to tilt this back to where it was and pull this forward and turn it off. And we're good to go there. So, shutting down. Um, the first thing that we want to make sure we do as the instructor, you want to get out of your slideshow. The escape key on the keyboard will get you out of slideshow mode, and then there would be a, an X in the upper right hand corner for you to close your file. The next screen behind that will be the PowerPoint application which will also have a red X in the upper right hand corner for you to close PowerPoint. After you have done those three things, then you can remove your thumb drive and or as in most laptops, if you know how to click on the Windows icon, you can eject that thumb drive to make sure that you're safely removing it. 
if you pull it out when you have the file open, you can corrupt the file and then you can't access it after that. Something else I would suggest you do is always bring your thumb drive on a second thumb drive as a backup. You never know what can happen. So um, you want to make sure then, class assistants, that the instructor logs off. And that does not mean shut down the computer, but just go to that icon again to the power button. And when you get the menu for shut down or log off, we want to select log off. And then in most of the systems, it's, it's going to have either a button, which you can't read here because it's in red, but it says system off. If you were to hit that button, then the projector will turn off automatically. Most of the time, the projector screens are going to also automatically go back up. On a unit like this, it doesn't have a system off button, but it has a power button on the very far outer margin. And when you touch that, it's going to prompt you to say, are you sure you want to shut this down? And you say, exit system, and then it will power everything down. Most of them are going to give you that, that message to make sure that's what you really want to do. If you were to turn it off accidentally and need to turn it back on, it may take a few minutes because it would have to cool down. It would depend on how long the projector had been on before you did that. Um, so it, it may not come immediately back on. And that's a part of why that message normally pops up, to give you the chance to say, hey, are you really sure you want to shut the projector off? It gives you the option to say, oops, no, didn't mean to hit that button. Okay. Again, on some of the other systems, it's going to have a button that says exit system. So it just depends on what room you're in, but they're all fairly easy to operate. In the different rooms, there can be any combination of lighting. In this particular room, there is uh, manual lights. So as a class assistant, I would just turn, I wouldn't make it pitch dark, but turn some of the lights out anyway. So if I hit this one switch, that's taken those ceiling lights to 50%. Uh, this has done the same thing. This one just shuts what's off in the very front here that gives you a cleaner, brighter image on the screen. And then one of them I thought was to turn them all off, but I don't see that happening now. So you can play with those uh, to get them to a level that works best for you. In small hall, um, they have a built-in system this way that has an off button built into the podium. It also has an A, B, C, or D, which again are those variations on the lights. One of them will be just lights in the front to use the blackboard. Um, others will be half the front half of the lights or the back half of the lights or all the lights. Again, for these three locations as well as you will haul, um, the parking that is approved with your OSHA hang tag is at Kaplan Arena. But if you and or a member of the class has a DMV parking sticker as well as an OSHA parking tag, they can park in any faculty staff spot on campus, including parking meters, and they don't have to pay the meter. So um, if you need to be closer by and have those two tags, um, know that you can use those. And all of the rooms on campus, of course, are wheelchair accessible, uh, as well as the restrooms. If you have, as an instructor, a lot of materials that you need to bring to class and it really is going to be a problem for you if you, you know, have to be all the way over at Kaplan Arena, um, contact the office. We can give you a special one-day pass that we pay for. It's pricier than the hang tag, so we ask that you only request one if you really need it. But if you do have either a, a walking issue or you have a lot of materials you need to bring in with you to the class, um, we'd be happy to provide one of those guest passes for you to park closer by. Now, there is a lot of construction going on on campus right now, and parking is just hard to find, even if you have the ability to park in a faculty staff. So it doesn't guarantee there will be a spot for you. Um, I know when I have to come to campus for meetings, I have to leave 30 minutes early because I have to go sometimes to two or three parking lots to find a spot. So. 
Um, it's no guarantee, but it's something that will help get you a little closer if you can find a spot. This screen um, is something that William and Mary always puts out um, with regard to their equipment here on campus. They do not want you to be tampering with anything. A lot of these have little cages over the front of them because they don't want anybody to go in and, and mess with the settings. So we please ask that you um, follow that. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. The, the question is, does the instructor close out their file and log off, or does the class assistant? And I'm going to say it sort of depends on the instructor. Uh, some of them are going to know how to do that on their own. It does belong to you as the instructor, and you may want to do it yourself to make sure that someone doesn't accidentally corrupt your file. Uh, but some of our instructors don't know what to do. So I would normally, as a class assistant, I would say, you know, are, are you fine to, to remove your file? And if they say, no, they don't know how to do that, then you could do that for them. All right, I am done. Um, thank you again for your time <laughs> and for volunteering. We have um, a lot of classrooms in a lot of locations, and we can't really operate smoothly without your assistance, so we appreciate that.